This man's name is one, he is one of the richest billionaires on earth, definitely not Elon Musk. He basically made his money from living his childhood dream, which is inventing neodymium magnets, a piece of scientific work, the world has never seen before. Okay, one doesn't love injustice, he wanted to be like the Batman in Justice League, he loves to help people as he feels that action speaks louder than words. Talking without actually taking actions isn't just worth it. So with the privilege of being a billionaire, one decides to fake his own death and form an anonymous group which was just like the Avengers but without superpowers. This group would help in taking down tyrants and bad people from different countries, people that the world couldn't touch. Let's dive straight into the story, do not touch the exit button till you watch to the end. Sit back relax and enjoy the video. Popularly known as Ryan Reynolds, and anonymously known as one in this American vigilante action thriller called Six Underground. He recruits a team of five people including him, he gives them a numbered nickname. Just like him, this people have no past and are considered dead. So that means they faked their own death and decided to work as ghosts. After they had gone to interrogate the lawyer of a tyrant in Florence, Italy. They are being pursued by gunmen with heavy gun power, two who is a spy, had being shot through a window while she was trying to escape and five who is actually a doctor can be seen trying to operate on two's gun wound, while the crew were in a hot car chase. Meanwhile, Six is a very skillful driver, he evades the gunman, leading to a lot of car accidents. While they are being pursued by a motorcyclist, Two decides to step up for the crew by firing at the rider while she was still injured. As the chase becomes so intense, One requested that Four help out. Four another member of the vigilante crew is a Skywalker who is basically good at running past buildings. He helped in taking out some gunmen in the most tragic way. One who had scooped out the eyes of the lawyer then uses his eyeballs to unlock the transmission between their number one target, Rovich, and his four generals. Number three who is a hitman then helped out four in taking down the remaining gunmen, but in the process six, the fast and furious driver got killed in the most brutal way. This made the team devastated, they wrapped up his body. In an emotional moment they tossed him into the ocean. Nobody knew nothing about six as close relationships with each members was forbidden. It was worse till the extent that they didn't even know each other's name. One wanted it that way, he was like the professor of six skillful vigilantes, just that this time around they weren't robbing banks but fighting for the cause of the people and their nicknames were based on numbers. One then tells the group that they had to find a number seven to replace six, the gray man. The movie then switches to Falcon Soldier on a mission in Afghanistan, Blaine is actually a sniper man from the Delta Force, on a screwed up mission in Afghanistan, Blaine saw his whole team die, he had the chance to save his teammates by taking a shot but because of the orders from higher authorities, he didn't shoot. This event made Blaine live with guilt for the rest of his military life. While Blaine was thinking about his teammates and the effed up mission in Afghanistan, one came to him, he tells him that he would have ordered him to pull the trigger, he gives Blaine an opportunity to fight world-class evil leaders, he invites him to the crew as number 7. Blaine who wanted to redeem himself then accepts the offer. Blaine faked his death, a befitting burial with military paparazzi was conducted in honor of the soldier. Blaine was able to witness his own burial as his brother cried uncontrollably. One introduces Seven to the team, he briefs him on the vision of the crew, saying their objective is to take down world leaders who were bad. He reminds Seven that he is dead, so he is going to be restricted from visiting certain cities and any association with his loved ones had to be cut off. One then tells the crew about their next mission and number one target, Rovich Elimov. A Turgistan dictator who treated his people as slaves. The team then discussed about the advantages of being dead but not actually dead, like not paying taxes, no criminal records and backstabbing girlfriends, one chipped in saying the most important aspect of being dead and yet still alive is the freedom. He then tells them about the coup he is planning to stage on Rovich, the Turgistan dictator on the Day of the Dead. He tells them that they had to take out his four generals, which will mess up his day, because they are the most powerful people close to him, then they have to free Rovich's democracy-loving brother who is held hostage. Then finally hit Rovich and bring back peace to the country. It wasn't going to be an easy mission. But with the help of one's neodymium micro-magnets invention they could probably pull through. Blaine then inquires to know more about Rovich's story, so the movie takes us back to when it all started in Turgistan. People were fleeing the country because of Rovich's military rule, Rovich is so cruel to his people he takes down anyone who tried to rebel against him. One who was still a philanthropist at that time, paid a visit to the Turgistan border, to carry out his good works on the injured and sick citizens. But he was just doing it for the papers and not actually from his heart. Just as he is trying to donate for the cause of the Turgistan people, Rovich launched an airstrike on the border, taking down so many people, young and old. 
As one watched so many defenseless people die that day, he decided to have a change of heart and actually put his good works into action. He decided to be a good Jeffrey Dahmer and form the anonymous vigilante group that will take down this tyrant leaders once and for all. It is believed that Rovich's philosophy is to use his power to communicate resolve and inspire fear to his enemies. One meets up with Rovich after a stage drama relating to tyrants. He tells him that no matter how a tyrant acts, justice was going to be served as demonstrated in the opera they had just seen. Rovich tells him that heroes always win in operas and drama but it doesn't work that way in real life. One hooks up with a girl he met at the opera and suddenly developed an emotional connection with her. Had sex with her and then ghosted. The movie then switches to the present day, number 4 reveals to Seven on how Murat, Rovich's brother was imprisoned. He tells Seven that number 2 was actually working for Rovich before she was recruited. She had actually ambushed Murat while he was trying to escape, she captured him and then imprisoned him. So part of their mission is to rescue Murat from prison, although he isn't a saint, but he is still manageable. Back to the present day, the most feared dictator, Rovich then ordered his four generals to go over to Las Vegas, where they will meet up with Victor the arms dealer. He tells them to have fun and get drunk after they had completed the mission. One then informs the team that they will be going over to Las Vegas to take down the four generals. He tells them that they had to be careful because Las Vegas has more facial recognition software than anywhere in the world. So they needed to choose their disguises wisely. Be subtle and blend in. At Vegas, after the generals had concluded the arms business with Victor, they decided to have fun in a hotel, party with girls and get wasted. Well, they were actually wasted but in a bad way. Number 2 and 3 had the worst disguise as they dressed as tennis players in one of the biggest events building in Vegas, they go over to the room the generals had lodged. They shot one of them who came to peek through the door after he heard a knock. They shot the remaining two in the most unexpected way ever. Then proceeded to the other room where the general who knew about the location of Murat was having sex with one of the girls. They held him at gunpoint and then demanded for the location of Murat. After he had revealed the location, he was shot in the head and died while he was still inside a woman. A pleasurable death. One then criticized their disguises saying they dressed like clowns, overlooking his own Vegas biker costume. After the bloody event, Two and three then stirred up an emotional connection as they had sex together. The next morning, three tells two that he had to go somewhere and needed to speak to somebody. He went over to a hospital to see his mom who is suffering from loss of memory. He tells her about the mission and how he was going to take out bad guys, so he can erase his bad past and write a new one, but his mother wasn't pleased with him as she tagged him a murderer for what he did in the past. Three originally known as Javi once worked for a mafia guy named Diego. At one mission he killed a little girl's father and suddenly developed guilt towards his actions which made him stop working for Diego. Later that night, as he was about leaving. One sneaked up on him like Bruce Wayne would do to offenders in Gotham. He puts a gun to his head and warns him that he isn't supposed to relate with anyone or have anything to do with them. He tells him that they had sacrificed everything for this mission so he has to respect it. At Turgistan, a furious Rovich then addressed his men on the killing of his generals. Since he had to replace the generals, he called out four other people who were next in line. But then throws them off the building saying it wouldn't be wise to trust those who stood the most to benefit from the death of the generals. So he appointed new people as generals. Meanwhile, as the team prepares to fly to Hong Kong so they can rescue Murat, four narrated to the crew on how he was recruited by one during a failed mission. It was revealed that one doesn't like the word family, so if you are ever stuck up on a mission, he won't come back for you. In the next scene, Rovich travels to his visit his brother in Hong Kong, he asks him if he knows anything about the attack on his generals, but Murat claims not to know anything. Rovich then tells Murat that this attacks on his generals will only increase the intensity of his strikes. He tells Rovich that he would be going back to Turkestan and he had given to kick, a muscular bodyguard strict orders to harm Murat if anything happens to him. One briefs the team on the mission, it is going to be a penthouse extraction as they are going to rescue Murat from his prison. They were going to use the cranes as the sniper's nest for seven and then a crossover to escape from the penthouse. On the day of the mission, two and three arrived in a Ferrari with masks on, while four used a zipline to cross over to the penthouse, seven secured his position on the crane, while five waits outside of the building for the getaway plan. As two and three got inside the building, they released laughing gas in the air as they took down security guards. While on the mission, three then began flirting with two, it is then revealed that he had lost one of his mask seals so the laughing gas affected him. He was almost killed by Seven for picking an enemy gun but he was lucky that his mask is actually bulletproof. Four takes down the men safeguarding Murat as he proceeds to rescue him. On their way out they were faced with so many men which wasn't supposed to happen according to the plan. 
Seven then tells them to grab onto something. He shoots at the pool's glass as the water floods the whole building, wiping out Rovich's men. The team managed to escape using the zip line, but Four wasn't able to make it out on time as he was faced with Dekik, Rovich's bodyguard. One wanted to stick with his philosophy by leaving Four on the mission but in an emotional scene, Seven stopped him saying he is never going to leave his teammate behind again. He steps out of the car position his sniper and then shoots to kick, hereby saving Four. The next day, after they had completed the mission, Seven got into an argument with One, One tells him that the mission is more important than the man, but Seven wasn't ready to subscribe to that philosophy, so he tells the team that his name is Blaine and he doesn't leave a soldier behind. The team then tell each other their names as they bonded. As they arrived to Justan, one then hacked the state television as Rovich was getting ready to address the public, hereby giving Murat the floor to preach democracy which inspired the people and led to a revolution. This revolt and riot then made Rovich escape to his private yatch. The team then arrived at the private yatch. They set up their positions as two and three fights off Rovich armed men. One activates his magnetic invention which took out majority of the guards. The ghost team then attacked Rovich's men with the help of one's invention. They proceeded to find Rovich but in the process the yatch began to sink because of an explosion that occurred. Four who was at the upper deck had no chance of escaping because he was surrounded by Rovich's men. They had to pursue Rovich who was trying to escape or risk the mission by saving Four. It became a titanic situation but one had a change of heart and proceeded to save Four. Rovich escaped the sinking yatch using a boat. As he transferred to an helicopter, he discovers that it was being piloted by Murat and the ghost team. Rovich begs his brother for mercy but he tells him that it was too late as his sins had caught up with him. Rovich then asked to die with dignity but they dropped him off in a Turkistan refugee camp, where angry citizens rushed him and then beats him to death. After the death of Rovich, Murat was made the new president. While two and three sparked a relationship, he takes two to go see his mother, as she embraced him tightly. Four and five spent their time together climbing mountains. While one and seven travels to New York City. One sees the woman who he had shared an emotional connection with before he started the vigilante group. He watches her from a distance as she goes over to meet her son which could possibly be one's son. The end, thank you for watching till this point. You are a legend. If you love contents like this, please leave a like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more videos. Goodbye till we meet again.